The future of the Dead Island franchise could lead to many possibilities. Rather it be another indie spin-off, another mobile game, or maybe a VR port for all we know. We truly have no idea what Deep Silver Dan Buster have up their sleeves. But if Dead Island 2 is successful, I could see the franchise expanding in numerous ways. In this video, I discuss the possibilities of what comes next in terms of a spin-off, but also a few interviews that reveal more of what to expect. First of all, there's already been a Dead Island 3 in discussion, with the developers stating they're leaving ideas on the table for Dead Island 3 if Deep Silver will allow them to make it. From what I see, it all comes down to how Dead Island 2 performs. Anyways though, here are my live thoughts, where I ramble my way through more of the possibilities. Reading further into an article with the creative director, where we learn they're going to be feeding us information slowly and steadily in Dead Island 2 to build that overall mystery even further. James also says here, we took the opportunity to build a bit more, finger quotes, truth, into this story, but there are a lot of clues throughout. Whether it's a throwaway line in a cutscene, a line extracted from a journal, the logos on bits of tech, Geofarm, <laughs> that definitely will get people switch on and asking questions online. Sort of feeding the community with a bit of what if ism. So there's gonna be a lot of things that they're setting up to for us to speculate, which is kind of neat. I like the idea of that. I hope they don't hold too much information back for DLCs and so on, and kind of, you know, allow people to understand more of what happened with the virus from the beginning. Because if you're gonna hold too much back, it's just gonna lead to theories that don't have much of a foundation. You know, you want theories that make sense. So the more information, the more lore, the more things to really observe, get to know, expand the franchise, the better. One thing they very, very much make clear is this is a much more comedic follow-up to the original because if you've played the original, you know the story was a lot more serious and straightforward. And this one, the story is a lot more comedic, kind of taking itself less seriously this time around. Although there are moments of levity to really switch it up. With these more dramatic moments, when we want to make sure you care about a character, we can also turn the horror up to 11, as well as put you into some really dark locations and places. So yes, the dark locations and those places, like with the Butcher the Clown boss fight, are gonna be those areas that really do switch up the tension and the tone. Now, many may be wondering if we're ever gonna return to the seriousness of the original Dead Island games and the franchise going forward after Dead Island 2 with its, you know, campiness and comedicness, and honestly, I don't really think so. You know, for one mainline game, we got a canon sequel expansion, a tower defense mobile game, a retro side-scrolling beat-em-up, a weird MOBA game, and whatever you want to call Escape Dead Island. Anything could truly be next. And that's kind of how I'm looking at it right now. You never know what characters are going to become popular in Dead Island 2, or play more of a bigger role, and end up getting their own little spin-off. Think of it with Retro Revenge, which was the game that was originally supposed to ship with Dead Island 2, the 2014 Jaeger version. So I definitely could see more spin-offs definitely coming in the future in some type of way. We just don't really know how. Also, one reason they're kind of like not taking the story too seriously is because they want to avoid ludonarrative dissonance. And for those that don't know, I wrote the definition down just for you. The ludonarrative dissonance is the conflict between a video game's narrative told through the story and the narrative told through the gameplay. Like in the Uncharted games, for example. While Nathan Drake seems like a kind of family man, he seems cool and all, he's murdered hundreds of people, which really has no story consequence nor impacts Nate as a person, as he seems pretty damn normal to me. It's one of those situations where they're not trying to focus on the seriousness in the story. Besides that though, I don't think there's really too much else for me to discuss in terms of expanding the franchise. I mean, what spinoffs could we really get? Hey, we could get something with Sam B. He's appeared in a few of the spinoffs, but honestly, it's really all up in the air what could happen going forward. 